Steve, when you and I last spoke, we've spoken twice now. The first time you said your conviction level on shorting the Canadian banks was a 7 out of 10. Last time you said it was a 9 out of 10. With what you've seen for Royal as well as CIBC, what is it today? It's roughly the same. It's unchanged. And what did you see specifically from Royal and, and CIBC so far? Well, I, you didn't see any further deterioration in credit quality quarter to quarter. But you saw the same kind of increase in non-performing loans and deterioration in reserves on a year-over-year -year basis. So those who want to be positive could, could say it hasn't gotten worse in three months. And those who want to be negative could say it's worse year-over-year. -year. I, I would say the, two, the quarters for the two banks, I think, have two puzzles to me. Number one, um, you have some private banks in areas like Alberta. There's a company called ATB Financial. It's a private bank. It only makes loans in, in Alberta and that area. And it's had an explosion in non-performing loans over the last year. And while the Canadian banks don't disclose non-performing loans <clears throat> on a region-by-region -region basis, you would think that that would be showing up in the numbers. And it hasn't, at least as far as I can tell, yet which is something of a surprise, and I can't explain it. And then the other puzzle in the quarter was that both banks are growing their commercial loan books double digit, uh, which is much faster than, the obviously, the Canadian economy is growing. And it would seem to me, with all the uncertainty out there, both in Canada and the world, this would be the last time in the world you should be growing your commercial loan books double digit. But that's what the banks are doing. I find it puzzling and unexplainable. So let's start with the first one. The, the non-performing loans that you say are exploding over at ATB, can you give us a little bit more granularity about what you've observed with ATB? And the second part of that question is, how, how would we not be able to see it in, in Royal or CIBC? Um, I, unfortunately, I don't have the statistics of ATB in front of me. Uh, the, the information is public. Um, but the, the non-performing loans are up, I may be misstating, uh, up over 100 percent or something extraordinary in a year. Um, now, again, that private bank uh, only makes loans in Alberta and other areas around there, around ca in Canada. So, I mean, as you know, that part of Canada is going through something of a very severe recession right now. So it's not a surprise that ATB's um, non-performing loans are up s at such an extraordinary amount, of, amount in a year. Um, what's, again, I, don't, I can't explain why we're not seeing an even bigger increase in non I mean, Look, we are seeing an increase in non-performing loans in Canada. Um, it's less than I would have expected at this point, given what's going on at ATB. Now, obviously, that's a much smaller part of the loan book of CIBC and Royal Bank of Canada. But I can't explain why the, you know, the commercial loan lo losses or non-performing loans and the you know, personal bankruptcies in that part of Canada are up, are up enormously. And and I can't explain at this point how. Um, the Canadian banks seem to be skating through that. But you would, it sounds like you would expect to see it at some point. I would, and hope maybe it'll happen in the next quarter or two. Okay. So the other part, though, that is puzzling to you is, is the amount of growth that we're seeing in the Canadian commercial loan books, double-digit territory. You Correct. don't think that that makes sense? Well, I mean, think of it this way. Um, I don't think anybody would argue that the Canadian economy is weaker today than it was a few years ago. Um, you know, growth is slower, and I'm not making an argument that Canada right now is on the verge of a recession, but things have certainly deteriorated to some degree. So why you would all of a sudden have such very high levels of loan growth in such large institutions? I, I I find inexplicable. And why you would want to do it at this time in the cycle, I find even more inexplicable. So you think that the Canadian banks aren't being prudent enough as it relates to their commercial loan books? That's my view. I mean, I listened to the call. They seem very comfortable. But I, I, I frankly, I don't understand it. Uh, it tends to be the case that banks that accelerate their loan growth at the end of the cycle will suffer problems from those loans that they make at the end of that cycle. You know, some would say, though, that when you look around the world, Steve, that Canada economically is actually faring quite a bit better than most countries, most geographies. Uh, our economic data continues to 
hold steady, it seems. I mean, it is not where it was maybe a couple of years ago, but it is certainly not worse than so many areas of the world right now. Well, you know, I guess in a, in a, 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 in a basketball team of very, very short players, Canada stands out by a couple of inches, I think would be fair. <laughs> So when would you expect then to, to see some cracks in the commercial loan books? And I, you know, you can't ever make these predictions because I, I don't know what's going on internally at the banks. You know, I do know that personal bankruptcies in Canada are rising fairly rapidly. They're certainly rising very rapidly in Al Alberta. Um, so I would expect it to show up at some point. But, you know, to, to make a, a claim that you know, Steve Eisman, that's me, thinks that uh, next quarter it's all going to show up would be, that'd be ridiculous because you, you just never know when this stuff shows up. And, and we've talked about this in the past. With, with your call being sure, anything, I mean, you have to pay for the carry trade. You got to pay for borrowing the stock and you, when you short banks, mm -hmm. you have to pay the dividend as well. Um, you have Correct. to be patient. You have to be patient. That's true. You do. You have to be patient. It's not for everybody. It's, no, it's not. Um, so what, what do you think is your time frame on, on this call, on this trade? You know, I have different time frames on different, I mean, none of my shorts that I have in my hedge fund are what I would call trading shorts. That's not the kind of investor I have. I am. Um, you know, my, my, the time frame of my shorts tend to be anywhere from nine months to three years. And, and where do you, where would you say you are in this? You and I spoke for the first time back in April. You know, I think we're a quarter of the way through the story. And I'm curious as well, um, when we've talked about your shorts in the past, Royal, CIBC, Laurentian, you've said that you were involved in Home Capital, uh, as well as Genworth. Have you added any new names? I haven't added any new names and I haven't subtracted. And have you added to the positions? No, I, haven't, I, I would say we're roughly the same as we were the last time we spoke. And Steve, going back to your original thesis, when we talk about the increase in, in credit losses, when we talk about the puzzling aspect of, uh, of the commercial loan book growing double-digit territory, explain to us what you actually expect to see as it relates to um, the, the, the bottom line numbers, the, the credit quality, the credit ratios declining. That, that's your big thesis. You think that at some point we will see credit ratios decline? Well, you'll see credit ratios, I don't know if decline is the right word, let's just say it gets worse. And then as a result, the loan loss provision, which is what appears on the income statement, goes up. And so the net income is lower than expected. How much lower? We'll have to wait and see. Uh, and, and to go back to that, when we've spoken in the past, I mean, you, you aren't doing this for a 5% return. You, know, you love to ask me that question, don't you? <laughs> well, well, you know. Let's just put it. Let's just put it. Let's just put it this way: take the dividend levels of the banks, add the cost of carry, which is not that much, maybe a percent or so, and assume that my price target is more than that. Yeah, and well, leave it at that. Well, you've kind of said in the past, twenty percent to the downside, correct? If I said it, I said it. You say, yeah. Does it sound about right right now, or is it more like 25? Yeah, it's it's un unchanged. I mean, I, I don't change my views in three months unless there's some data points that are really starting to show that I'm wrong, and I haven't seen any mm. yet. What would you be looking for to see if you are wrong? I'd have to see, um, you know, over a quarter or two, the level of non-performing loans stop not going up anymore, maybe going down. That's what I'd have to say. But are you looking at the interest rate environment? Are you looking at the employment numbers? Do you trust the Canadian Well, I'm definitely looking numbers? at the employment numbers. Okay. I, you know, the interest rate level doesn't interest me that much for this thesis. I mean, it is causing margin compression in the Canadian banks. So one benefit of the short is, you know, one of the risks that you have in a short is that if you're wrong, um, the stock goes up in your face. But here, even if I'm wrong, I don't think I'll. I don't think the Canadian banks will go up that much because, in the, given the current interest rate environment, there's margin, net interest margin pressure. So it's not like the Canadian banks are going to blow numbers away. Mm -hmm. So you've got a nice built-in hedge for you. Yeah, I mean it, it, it's it's nice if I'm right. And again, if I'm right, the stocks go down significantly. And if I'm wrong, they'll go up, but they don't. I don't think they go up that much. 
Um, Steve, one last question here. Just curious, is there anything else that you're watching these days that you are looking to short? Obviously, you're not going to tell us if you don't have the short position on, but what else is interesting to you? Not, um, the only other position that I have in Canada, which we've never discussed, is Canadian Tire, which is uh, one of my short positions. Why are you short Canadian Tire? So it's a dual thesis. You know, they have a fairly significant credit card portfolio, which, if I'm right about the credit and the Canadian banks, eventually those problems will show up in Canadian Tire's credit card business. Um, and you know, as you know, Canadian Tire is a very significant retailer in Canada. And I think at the last two quarters, they've had some real margin pressure. And I think the reason for the margin pressure is they're feeling, they're feeling the heat from Amazon. Makes, uh, makes some sense on the Amazon front. But I, you know, I have to ask as well, why, why wouldn't there be other Canadian retailers that you'd also be looking at? Or are there? Or does it have more to do with the credit Well, I, I can't say. I won't say that. I mean, I mean you can't short everything. That, that is true. <laughs> that is true. That's a lot of positions to be shorting and carrying. That'd be a lot of positions in Canada. I don't, I'm not, I don't have a, a bad opinion about Canada. I know you don't. Last question then. Are you shorting much in the States? Um, the three regions that we are involved with are the U.S., uh, Canada, and Europe. And I would say our biggest allocation of short capital is probably the European banks. Okay. Are you closing out any of those positions or you think they're going lower? I think they're going significantly lower.